Okay, so you're all ready for your new um, resolutions tomorrow. But end of another year, and you're still standing. Say to the person next to you, I'm still standing. You know, some of you might just be standing, but you're still standing. And today's a day where we can worship God. We can celebrate His goodness this morning. So we're going to start and we're going to sing our song. It's called Gratitude. And it's just about expressing our gratitude to God for all He has done for us. Let's worship Him. All oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. Every song must say, but you never do. for a 
Few of us want to pray out and sing out our gratitude to God this morning. Father God, for guiding us through this year, Lord, even the hard times and in the good times, Lord, I thank you that you've been with us, that you've stood with us, Lord. You've never abandoned us. You've never left us. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. How great is our God to sing with me. How great is our God.
scary when the years go on and on, isn't it? Think tomorrow will be the year 2024. My goodness. I worked out tomorrow, I can say it's not long until we're nearly 40. Hey, Naomi. Uh, my wife doesn't like being getting older. I don't mind her too much. But I've got a couple of announcements just very quickly, and then we're going to do some prayer, pray together before we, listen, before we come around God's word. And the first announcement is this. Next week, everything is back to normal, okay, as sort of as we know it. Some of you are like, yes, normality. Is anyone not looking forward to going back to work? Keep your hands down. Okay, don't. we got you on camera. We can use it for your boss. Hey, Michelle, you get to work with the best team possible. I don't know why you're putting your hand up. Okay, brilliant. But, um, but next Sunday, we're back to our four services um, across the Chinese Fellowship with Burson and with ourselves here at 10.30. Um, and at the four o'clock service as well. But um, just a couple of, just one thing just to share with you guys. Last year, we embarked on journeying and reading through the Bible in a year. A lot of people engaged with this. Not everyone did it on our app that we use, but people were doing it in lots of different ways. And it was amazing to see how people grew in their faith and in their understanding of the Bible through reading a little bit every day. And so what we're doing is this year, if you are a technophobe, you can close your ears for a minute, okay? So that's fine. But for those of you who do like technology, who do like using the YouVersion Bible app, myself and Naomi, we read the Bible through each year, um, just sort of a practice, a discipline that we've got into. And so we're doing what we call a, a group read together, um, which is basically you all link in to the Bible passages. You get given the Bible passages every day onto your phone and some like commentary and helping understand it. But you can also share your thoughts. So we're doing a version Bible reading plan this year called the Bible in One Year Express, which means you don't have to read the bits that are go, he begat him, who begat him, who begat him, who begat him, who begat. You know what I'm talking about, okay? It's going through the story of the Bible. So whether it's duplication, it doesn't give you duplicate stories. It's called Express Way Through. So if you think, I'd like to know the story of the Bible, but I've not actually read most of it through, or the big picture, you maybe just go to your favorite verses, 
um, then actually this is a really good thing for you to do. So I think I advertised it yesterday morning, and I think it's about 33 people already signed up who are definitely doing it together. So if you're interested in reading the Bible through in a year with some of the guys in church and sharing it through on your phone, if it's an iPhone, go and see Michelle. She'll show you how to pop it on the phone. If it's an Android phone, like a Samsung phone, etc., come speak to me. I can help you do that. Or if you want the link to work together and I can send you a little link out on the text message, ask me. And or, or else, if you're on email and get our church emails, check your emails because it is in your emails. And if people go to me, Pastor, you never email us. You don't read your emails properly. Okay, it's definitely there. I know it's there because my wife found the spelling mistakes. And uh, okay, so that's going to be on this year. So if you want to start reading the Bible in a year through with us, that's going to be on. Um, we're going to, in a moment, we're going to pray together. Prayer changes things, doesn't it? Some of you believe it does. Okay, some of you still in Christmas spirit. Does prayer change things? Yes. It really does. And if it doesn't change situations, it actually changes you. And it's powerful. And so many people remember this year, we were praying. Joy, can you stand up quickly at the back? Where's Joy? She's in the back corner there. Give us a wave, Joy. There we go. She's in the corner. And Joy, last year, her great, or this year, her great grandson, who lives in Germany, got diagnosed with a brain tumor and had to undergo a, a surgery to remove the brain tumor. And it's been really touch and go at times. And Joy brought me a card at the, I encourage you to go and read it afterwards with her. But it's from her, her, great, her granddaughter. And it says, at the end it says this. It talks about how Alexander, her grand, great grandson, has really come through, done better than they expected. He's done amazingly well. And her granddaughter's put this. We're grateful for your prayers. She says, I believe that they've made a difference. Isn't that incredible? Give it a clap. Go and some of you clap in there. It's incredible. Sometimes prayers, you know, sometimes it's frustrating for us when we keep praying, but we need to keep pushing in because prayer does make a difference. I was reflecting, you know, sometimes in life you get, you get moments where you feel like you're going from battle to battle. Does anyone ever feel like that? Or your different challenges, that's called workplace, most workplaces. That's called most families. We all have arguments. If you think no family has an argument, guys, yeah, basically, they all do. Okay, everyone has fallout, everyone has issues. And as says in Naomi, sometimes you get so caught up in the things that are going wrong. When you step back, you can see all God has done. And last year, it's incredible. I know in my life what God has done. I know in our church's life, it's been incredible what God has done. I know in individuals' lives, it's been incredible what God has done. So I want us just to stand for a moment. Is that okay? Can we stand to our feet, those who are able to? Do you want to grab some people around you? Okay. Maybe introduce yourself, because it could be from another congregation. Try not to just stick in your little clan, okay? Try and extend yourself to some people, maybe you don't. And I want you just to pray for each other, and pray this year that we experience, in this coming year, that you experience God's goodness, that you experience God's love, that they'll know what God's working. And at the end of the year, we can say, our prayers have made a difference. So go and grab some people around you then. There we go.
Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, you touch our everybody heart. Now, the Holy Spirit is coming down like fire, touch everybody heart. Holy Spirit is warm everybody. Lord, thank you. Thank you, you guide us pass through 2023. Today's, we are last day, 2023 here. We still call you. We still crying you. Lord, please using our heart to feel in you. Your hands touch our everybody. Lord, thank you. Give thank you for you. Because when you look back, you always with us. Your hands always hold ours. Lord, give thanks. We give thanks to you because of you. So today we can stand here. Lord, we only use our heart to say thank you. Lord, now we're standing in front of 2024. Now, you're still guiding us. Your Holy Spirit is still in here. You still touch our everybody heart. Lord, if you know you, if you know you, we have nothing but because we have you. Let all us look upon you because of Jesus. Jesus here. Jesus here. He teaches us. He guides us. Lord, please carry on, guide us, carry on teaching us, carry on touch our hearts. Lord, carry on heal in here, heal us. Lord, we all need you. Lord, whatever, what conditions we suffered, what conditions we see. Because of you, your hands always hold us. Lord, let us say hallelujah. Because of you, you are here. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Let us singing, crying. Thank you for your grace. For your glory is in here. For your blessings in our 2023, 2024 as well. Lord, keep carry on, guide us, bring us, enter into 2024. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. And then we're going to continue to stay. We're going to worship. And as we worship, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. And this will be a new song. We sung the chorus a few times. It's simple to pick up, and I encourage you, let's just worship God together as we sing All Hail King Jesus. There was a moment when the lights went out When death claimed his victory The King of love has given up his life The darkest day in history They're on a cross to make for sinners For every curse is blood at all One final breath and it was finished but not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What a sacrifice was made As the heavens rolled oh.
branches are blindly breaking through. When all was lost, we crossed eternity. The King of Life was on the move. For in a dark cold tomb, oh, when the Lord. Oh 
Oh, your mercy never fails me Oh, my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Yes, Lord. All my life, you have been so. So good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. sing of your goodness. We sing of your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have been good to us. Lord, we thank you that your goodness follows us all the days of our lives. And Lord, we pray now as we hear the word from Pastor David, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts this morning, God. We will not leave this place transformed, but we'll, we leave this place transformed, Lord, not the same as when we came in. We pray that in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats and welcome Pastor David up to share. Wonderful. Do you know I love that chorus? Nearly every morning I sing that. And uh, even when I have to get up early to play golf, a couple of times in the week I get in the car and uh, I'm singing away as I go along and then... Because the goodness of God, the greatness of God, and the power of God, and he's with us every day. And it's so good to be in the house of God this morning, isn't it? On this particular day, because none of us have ever walked this way before. It's never been the 31st before. 
of this month. And I always think it's, it's strange because you've just come through the festivities of Christmas and it's such a busy time of Christmas. And everybody is worn out and tired and, and they just wait. And they, they all then end up having a good sleep after Christmas dinner. And then you think, well, we've got to go all this over the following day. And then, of course, it's the last day of 23. And we're on the edge of the year 2024. And it's always a strange time. And I know when I was the senior pastor here for so many years, it's, um, it's just amazing. November, I had to start thinking about the vision for the new year. And I'm so glad for the vision that we've got again for next year from Pastor. And it's just one of the things that the pastor has to do and feel for the church to have a vision. Because the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. And each one of us has to have a vision. And uh, for your life, for your family, for the church and for the world because Jesus had a world vision. And so it's called today, Forgetting and Reaching Forward. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 and 14 says, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward, towards what is ahead forgetting and reaching forward and people at this time begin to make new year resolutions it's something people have done year after year after year they make a promise not only to themselves and for themselves but for other people maybe for the family, maybe for their wife or their husband or their children. And they make New Year resolutions, promises. How many times have I heard the ladies particularly say, well, I know I've got to lose weight and I'm going to do it next year. I'm going to start. Then there are others who say, oh, well, I'm going to be more helpful around the house. I'm going to do more housework. I'm going to help my wife. I'm going to help my husband more. I'm going to help my children more with their education. I discovered that as I got older, they were helping me with my education. <laughs> I want to be a better person. I want to turn over a new leaf. I want to do things differently. And we go through all these things thinking in our heart and in our mind. And before January the 7th, many of those promises have not been kept. And things have gone on exactly the same as they were before. Because we think that we can change ourselves. And in our own thinking and in our own mind. But there's only one person who can change your life and my life continually. And he does it day by day and moment by moment is God himself. Yes. Praise God. And the Apostle Paul realized very early in his life that he was not perfect. And when you and I suddenly realize that we are not perfect, we make mistakes, we do things wrong sometimes, we say things that are wrong. And although we want to do the right thing, we sometimes find ourselves doing the opposite. But with God's help, he wants to help us. And so New Year is a time to reflect upon our lives. If you were to answer the question right now, and don't call it out, but what type of year would you say you have had? What type of year have you just experienced over this last 12 months? Some of you will say it's been a good year. 
God's been so gracious, so faithful, which we've just been singing. Other people perhaps here today, as well as many that are not here, would say it's been a difficult year. Others would say it's been extremely difficult and it's been tough. And you look back over the year and you can, the thing that God has given us is a memory that we can look back. It's amazing that we can look back, but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow morning. We have no idea what is going to happen in the next 24 hours. We have our thoughts. And throughout this past year, you can look at your life and other people's lives and other members of the church that you, we belong to here. And we thank God for this church. We could say, well, physically, it's really been difficult. I have suffered pain. I have suffered disappointment. I have suffered frustration. There have been times when I found it difficult to pray. And mentally as well, not only nationally and internationally, are people suffering mentally, but lots of our own people in their mind. And although we know from the scripture it says that God gives us this peace and he's with us, yet somehow we find it difficult mentally sometimes to come to terms with that, emotionally. Financially, we're in an era where we're We've suddenly realized that everything has gone up, prices have gone up, the price of food is doubled or trebled, and it's continuing the mortgages, and we have all these things around us. But at the same time, apart from all of those natural things that happen in our life, there is our spiritual life. There is our walk with God, which is a daily walk with God. So every morning we wake up, we say, well, Lord, good morning, Lord. Or we say, good Lord, morning, <laughs> because it's been a bad night. But we know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we know he never changes. So we have a great God that we can turn to. Perhaps otherwise today, did you achieve your aims and your goals? You set your aims out and your goals for the year. You put there, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to achieve. That's where I'd like to go. This is what I would love to do. The one thing about setting goals, and we all need to set goals, of what we're going to do. But did we achieve them? And sometimes when we haven't achieved, we've underachieved. We feel guilty. Sometimes then we feel, I should have done better. You know, when I was in school those years ago, the teacher wrote on it many times and said uh, he could do better. You know, he looks as if he's uh, miles away sometimes and he's not listening. But it's amazing what children can do today. They can do a half a dozen things while they're doing their homework, looking at something on television or writing something else down. They're amazing today. Did you feel that you've failed? I wonder how many have been beating their brow and saying, well, I've failed this year. I've let myself down. I've let my family down. I've let, I've let the church down. I've let God down. I've let work go to pieces. And we feel all these things and the emotions in our heart. Well, I had to think, well, Lord, what do you want me to preach about? Because we face all those things. And when I asked God what I should talk about, he gave me immediately that verse, this one thing I do. We're all busy people. It's an understatement. If I ask you, are you a busy person? You say, yes, of course I am. You know I am. We're all busy. And we're all busy doing many things. Lots of things, various things. And it's amazing when you look at uh, what people do and what they have to study at work or at college, university. And you look at all what you've got to do. And then you look at the subjects. You think of the family. You think of the husband and the wife. 
And they always say a woman's work is never finished. And you know, the husbands have got to do more to help the wife, especially if they're both working. And we can say all these things, but it's a matter of helping and achieving them. And we look at the family and we look at life and we look at work. And I know things have changed. I remember at one time, you know, I'd leave my house at 8 o'clock in the morning, start at 9 o'clock, get home at 6 o'clock, out of the house at 7 o'clock, went to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yes, it was like that except Friday. I had to go visiting a, an auntie on a Friday or someone. And then Saturday, an open air. In the morning, I thought the church wants me there every day. You know, Lord, I've not got time for myself. And when they say, can you take an open air on a Saturday afternoon, I thought, well, I'm going to miss Chelsea. <laughs> and I was disappointed. I thought, Lord, you're testing me again. And it was amazing with the home and the college and the church. And somehow you and I have to work around all of those subjects and all those facts of lives. Because we all have expectations. The Elam Pentecostal Church, not next year, but the year after, 2025, it's the centenary year of the Elam Pentecostal Church movement. This church, Elam Pentecostal Church, or it's called Cornerstone Elam Church now. George Jeffries, 100 years ago, this movement. And I remember standing upon the top of the, in the balcony of the Elam Church in Clapham, where I came from in London, and sitting up in the balcony. And I was standing up on the balcony giving hymn books out when people came upstairs because uh, it was a large church. And um, George Jeffries was in the service. And they mentioned, I turned around and looked at him. I shook him by the hand as he came down. I thought, well, how time has flown. All those years, I got saved when I was 12. And when I think about looking back and going forward, and I think, God, you have been so good. You have been so faithful. That some song sums it all up. And Paul's life, we heard a sermon last Sunday from the Indian young man. And what did he preach about? The Apostle Paul. And I sat there and I thought, by gum, he's, he's going to preach my sermon. And he went on about Paul's life and how he changed. And he looked at it and he preached well and everyone enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, Paul had a bad past. But one day he had an encounter with Jesus that radically changed his life. Hallelujah, when he, that light shone into his life. And we all laugh at it, people laugh at it in the world. And they say, he's seen the light, brother. Hallelujah. Of course, we have to talk about it. He's seen the light. It means his eyes have been opened. He's seen the truth. And the Apostle Paul's life was absolutely changed. And what does he write about in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It means when you became a Christian, your life was changed. From the moment you asked Jesus into your life, you're a changed person. Hallelujah. And it takes a lifetime, a lifetime, because you never reach 18 years until you've done 18 years. It's a fact of life. I never thought I'd become an octogenarian. In other words, an old grumpy old man. <laughs> but an octogenarian, who would have thought it? I never thought about it. I looked at the family in the past and thought, well, no, we never reached that age. But who knows? We never know. And what happened to the Apostle Paul? He became an apostle. He became a great preacher became a great writer. He began to love people instead of hating them and putting them in prison. He opened many churches. He preached to Jews and Gentiles. The Christian church grew and grew. When he got saved, it meant something to him. When I got saved, it meant something to me. When you got saved, it meant something to you. Amen? 
it means just as real today as I was when I got saved. Just as enthusiastic for what God is doing in the church today with Pastor Jim and the helpers and leaders and people and greater things are ahead. Amen? Amen. Because our God is on the move. He's ne- you know, we, we don't belong to a monument. We belong to a movement. Yes. Hallelujah. Just pinch the one next to you and see if he's alive. <laughs> no, don't pinch him. You might hurt him. But uh, he opened in all this. But what was the secret of his success? He was a man who was sold out for God. It meant something when his life was changed. This is what he wrote. And when he wrote many of these things in Romans, Corinthians, the church of Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi. You write, he wrote 14 letters to the churches and he was in prison when he wrote those. He was suffering and God told him he would suffer but he would see great things happen. And how many of us suffer in our lives but praise God as Pastor Jim said at the beginning, you're still standing. Hallelujah. We get, might get knocked down but we get up. And we say, God, with your help, we're going to face tomorrow. But this is what he wrote. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. He also said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he said, without Christ, I am absolutely nothing and I can't do anything. I do everything through him. That's how humble the Apostle Paul was. And he was in Athens. And whilst he was in Athens, he was thinking about the Olympic Stadium. Our sister-in-law lives up in Athens, and we, they took us to Olympia. And I went into that stadium, and I walked in that stadium, I didn't run. I'll leave that to Pastor Jim. And he knows what I'm going to be talking about today in the subject of marathons and running and running the race. And every one of us, whether we're walking or running, we're in a race. And every step that we take is one step nearer to his coming again. One step nearer to going home, to glory, and having a new heaven and a new earth. What a future every child of God has. And so we're going to look at a a video here. No sound on it, but it's one of the the champions of Britain. And uh, I didn't use a, a Greek man, Usain Bolt. So, thank you.
Now we know that Pastor Jim and Brighton, another young man from our church here, who love <laughs> training for the marathons. There are others who are in walking races and others who do different things. I see them come out of corner, out of the fitness place, day after day. I see them at night with their torches running. And it doesn't just happen like that. There is so much involved in the training. There is so much to do with their thinking. There is so much to do with what they eat. So much to what to do when they're thinking about those marathons. This one thing I do. You notice the concentration there. Waiting for that gun to go off. Waiting for that because the one word is focus. This one thing I do. I'm going to win that race. My eye is going to be on the finishing line. That is my goal. And if you use that as a metaphor, as an illustration and think, what is your goal in life as a Christian? My goal is to get there at the finishing line. It's to be there. It's to be there at the end. My eye is on there, fixing my eye upon Jesus, my focus and attention. And that was the same with his spiritual life. He put as much into his spiritual life as a runner would have put in. You don't just achieve something like that by not practicing and not working towards it. And as he's running, he doesn't think about his past failures. He doesn't think about the mistakes that he made before. He doesn't think about the pain that he had before, which when he was running, maybe a ligament went in the back of his leg. Or maybe he tripped. He was focused. This one thing I am going to do. And he focused on improving each step in his race until he reached the finishing line. The prize in those days was a wreath. But today... For the Christian life, it's meeting Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. That is our goal. That is our aim. That's going to be our focus throughout this coming year. Lord, help me to be faithful. Help me, Lord, to continue walking with you. Yes, it may be difficult, but Lord, my eyes focus on you. We have to learn from the past. There have been a time, there was a time when one of the uh, women got right close to winning that championship and she took her eye off and fell and tripped and she didn't get over it for a long long time and thought I've got to do better but praise God we are not bound by the things that are in the past and we must not allow things to bind us up from the past from the things that have gone wrong this last year, we've got to say, God, this is a new year, a new start with you, and by your grace, I'm going to achieve, because we have been set free. And when you think of the scripture, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You don't just start a race, you want to finish the finishing line. The runner wants to succeed. And I'm sure that when, you, when these athletes are going for the competitions, whichever country they're in, whether it was Jamaican, he was Jamaican, Usain, but whether it's British or whatever, they could think, ah, oh, I'll never beat him, I'll never beat her. He's the world champion. He's been the world champion. And we look like this all the time. There's a 16-year-old lad now taking the world by storm in darts, 16 years of age, just happening right over this weekend. Because the runner wants to succeed. He knows he's not perfect, but he wants to get better. And how can he do it? How can you and I improve in our walk with God? Thank God he's given us his word to help us. Thank God he's given us the Holy Spirit to help us. Thank God he's given himself. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. 
to help us. And he's given us prayer, a weapon, a spiritual weapon, so we can use prayer and God's word to help us overcome our weaknesses in this life. And when you look at the runner and you look at our walk with God, thank God God has not left us orphans. He is with us every day. And it's up to us to open the word, get down on our knees or sit whichever way you're going to pray or wait upon God and realize that we've got to be focused. We need to be motivated. We need to be dedicated. We need to be committed and we need concentration. They're all things that are runner needs, but in our walk with God, may God help us to have all of those things because the dangers are there. The danger of being sidetracked. The runner says, no, this one thing I do, I'm looking forward. You just imagine if it came into his mind to think, ah, when I'm running, oh, I know my mother's there somewhere in the crowd and I'm going to find her when I come round and why he takes his eyes off? He doesn't. Or another runner coming up behind and there are those who help them to go faster but they're still on concentrating to do it. The danger of being sidetracked. Maybe today you've been sidetracked over the year and suddenly you stopped. And it's very sad when people are sidetracked from sometimes of stopping away from church, sometimes stopping away from walking with God, turning their back a bit. And it's sad, and we get sidetracked. The danger of being distracted by other people, distracted by friends sometimes, who don't want you to walk with God, may be distracted by your family who don't want you to go to church or don't want you to be a Christian. It's not to be distracted. The danger of being put off so easily. We must never, never in our walk with God give up. We must not look back. Why did Jesus say, remember Lot's wife? Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. Turned into a pillar of salt. And I know one Sunday school teacher was giving this as an example and talking in the Sunday school to the children about it. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. And the little boy in the Sunday school class put his hand up and said, Miss, that's nothing. My mother looked back when she was driving and hit, turned into a, bum, into a post, <laughs> grew in the car, wrote it off. Yeah, there's, there's a danger. You have to keep focus. Even Jesus said, in the, uh, using a farming illustration, when he's doing the field, not look back. So often as Christians, we feel chained by our past mistakes. Paul knew what it was like to be disciplined. He knew what he had to do. He knew why he had to do it. And he knew how he had to do it. We call it a long word today, sanctification. Being set apart. He was set apart. God called him. God has called you. He's called me. Maybe not to be a pastor, not to be a leader, not to be this, but to be a child of God walking in this day and age, day, day and age. Paul used to weep for those who had worked away from Christ. Once he said, Demas has forsaken me. He used to weep for those who had rejected the gospel. And yes, we must feel for those members, friends, who walk away, who are perhaps have left their true love. But God's desire is to love the sinners, to bring them back, back to himself. May God give us that love. May God keep us focused on the finishing line. 
Paul wanted to hear the, the words above every other words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's just stand. We're going to sing that little chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for we pray for every individual here today pray for every child every teenager every middle-aged person every older person today every student here today every school person here today those in authority lord and those in the church we pray for every individual the lord we will stay focused you will help us lord that indeed not to be distracted not to be put off lord but to stand in your strength, to put on the whole armor of God, that, Lord, we might come to that finishing line to know that we start, but we want to continue to walk with you. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us. We know it's difficult. We know it's hard. We know the world, Lord, is a very serious place today, very dangerous place today. The world is upside down. Lord, help every one of us to turn the world upside down in the right way like the early disciples did. And as a church, Lord, and leadership, we pray your blessing to be upon each and every one that together we'll be able to say at the end of this next year, by your grace, Lord, we've run the race, we've kept the faith, we've been faithful with you. Lord, just touch our eyes today. Open our eyes that we may see such love, such beauty, and help us to be a witness for you wherever we go, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Challenging word, isn't it? Is there an encourage you? Just for, if, if you're to be online the next couple of days. Re-listen to that word if you need to hear it again. Just remind you, next year, striving forward, keeping our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus setting our goals on Jesus. If you haven't got your eyes on Jesus, you've got to go wander off. Let's fix our eyes on him. We're going to finish now. We're going to sing our final song, which is the blessing. And as we sing this, I want to encourage you, sing this over the people around you, people in front of you, behind you, beside you. Pray that as we go into 2024, that they will know God's blessing. They will know God's favor. They will know God's grace this year. And when we finished, there is a million biscuits and cakes, okay, next door. So make sure you go and get yourself a copper. Maybe chat to someone you haven't yet met or you don't yet know. It's a good chance to meet some other guys today. So Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. 
be upon you for a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children and his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you he is with you he is with you he is with you in the morning and the evening in your coming and you're going he is weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you that your face will turn towards them. You'll be gracious to them, Lord. We pray, Lord, that where there's been conflict and situations they face this year, next year, Lord, you'll give them peace, Lord. You'll give them hope as they go forward, Lord. And you pray, Lord, that 2024 will be a successful year, be a prosperous year, Father God, in our different circumstances, Lord. We pray that in your precious name. Amen. 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 Please go and grab a cup of tea and coffee next door and grab a biscuit and a cake as well, especially the kids.